So welcome uh, to this webinar. I'm, I'm excited. It's Mental Health Awareness Month, and it's one of those months where the weather starts to turn really nice for many of us in the United States, um, and we start to feel a little bit of relief. That way we can get outside and get some fresh air, but it also comes with a lot of busyness at the end of school years. It comes with testing and finals, um, and so mental health can really uh, be an important thing to keep in mind um, as we enter the month of May. So what I want to talk about today is empowerment journaling. And it's something we've been working on for about three years at Varsity Brands. Um, everything that I'm going to show you today is 100% free and accessible. So um, don't worry about uh, having to afford this for your students. Um, everything that you want from today's webinar is available on believeinyou.com and we'll We'll share some of that as well. So what I'm going to do is first talk a little bit about um, the bulletin. And the bulletin is our uh, newsletter that we send out to keep you updated on all of the mental health resources that Varsity Brands offers, as well as partners that we are working with um, that also provide free mental health resources. I had a conversation uh, with uh, my teammate, Tim, yesterday. He's on the call. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Um, and basically, we were talking about how everyone knows mental health in schools is important. It's a, you know, it's a priority. But then when it comes down to it, are we spending the time and money to actually prove that we feel like it's a priority? Um, and so to take one of the barriers, the dollars out of that equation, uh, Varsity Brands and all of the partners of the collective are here to help you all uh, implement high quality evidence-based resources uh, that you can use. So the good news is you don't have to register for the bulletin. If you registered for this webinar, we are gonna add you to the bulletin uh, email list. If at any time you don't wanna receive those emails, there's an opt-out uh, feature at the bottom of each email. So uh, feel free to, to utilize that um, if you need to, but otherwise every two weeks, we'll be sending you uh, an email with fresh resources that you can use um, at a click of a button. So that's a little bit about the bulletin. And honestly, um, I'm excited about one of the events that we were able to um, just kick off in April. And that was uh, the Student Empowerment Summit. Um, so this is just one example of the resources that we can provide. If you participated in the Empowerment Summit, thank you so much. Um, if you didn't participate it, all of the resources are still on our, our website. So go to believeinyou.com and you can navigate through to the Empowerment Summit resources. We had over 200 schools across the country sign up. That represented about 34,000 students. And we have started to receive some pictures in from some of those schools um, that, that are just showing us the amazing work that students can do. Um, and so the idea was that students would work through the month of April using our resources to plan a mental health awareness month that would then take place this month in the month of May. And so we provided three days of resources, lessons, links um, that students could look into uh, so that they could work on all of the, these, these projects together as teams. Um, so those are some students working there. And then this is a couple of the, the projects just from across the country uh, that we received in. And I, I just love this inspiration wall. Um, and if you just click and zoom in on some of these things, um, it's, it's emotional. Um, these kids uh, are putting a lot of thought, energy, and time into helping their students know that they're cared for and that they're, they're a part of a larger family. Um, and so inspiration wall was just one of the projects they could choose from. Um, and there were several others. But just a just a, a very short look at some of the resources that we provide through the collective and through Believe in You and Varsity Brands. So um, look out for that. Next month, you'll receive your first bulletin newsletter if you haven't already received one. Um, and we're, we're glad to have you a part, as a part of that family. So let's dive into journaling. Um, we're going to start with a little bit of an exercise. One thing that I love about journaling is it's an opportunity for us to retrain the voice that's in the back of our mind, right? That self-talk voice that we all walk around with all the time. And for whatever reason, through whatever conditioning, all the experiences that we had as children um, growing up, that voice can either be our best friend 
or I don't even want to say our worst enemy, but um, just, you know, uh, a dangerous voice uh, that can take us down a spiraling path, right? And so in order to help us understand how to activate that voice as a friend, um, as a cheerleader, as a motivator, uh, there are things that we can do, and journaling is one of those things. So what I want you to do now, just as a little exercise, um, uh, if you have a piece of paper nearby, jot down on the piece of paper. If you don't, it's all right. You can just kind of think of your answer. But take 15 seconds to think about your favorite pet. And imagine that the pet could understand absolutely everything that you say. So the first prompt is, write a one sentence compliment to your pet, all right? So if you wanted to let your pet know how much you love them, just write one sentence, a really nice compliment so that your pet knows how much you care. Give you a couple seconds to do that. All right, the second part of this, imagine that your pet can talk back to you. Write a one sentence compliment that your pet might say back. Just one sentence that if you're your furry friend or your scaly friend or whatever kind of pet you have um, could actually speak to you and pay you a compliment, what would they say? Just a couple of seconds to do that. All right, so if you're really brave and you want to, you can post these in the chat. Um, but what I'm going to do is give you the example for me. So this is Vinny. This is our family dog. Um, he is definitely the favorite pet of mine that we have in the house. And uh, we're, we're pretty good buddies. And if Vinny were going to give me a compliment, I think he would say something like this. Or, or this, is, this is actually what I would say to him. Vinny, thank you for always having a great attitude. Even when I'm not at my best, you really cheer me up, right? It doesn't matter if I come home and I'm upset about something that happened during the day um, or if I'm grumpy for some reason. Vinny just wants to be with me. He wants to hang out. And when he's hanging out with me, he has a great attitude, right? So I just wanted to let Vinny know um, that I, I really appreciate that. Now, on the flip side, if Vinny could talk to me, he might say something like this. Aaron, thank you for finding ways to make me happy like going on a boat, walking in the woods, or just sharing your sandwich. I share just about all of my sandwich crust with him, and he loves it, um, but Vinny thinks I'm thoughtful. So this is a silly little exercise. It's not traditional journaling, right? But these are prompted uh, writing tasks that anyone can do that are designed to give us some positivity inside of our self-thought and our self-voice, right? So in this way, we're training our inner voice um, to, to actually um, be a friend, right? Give us that positive motivation that we need. It didn't take long for me to think of these. These are not part of any journal, by the way. Um, I just created these slides for today. It didn't take me long to think of these. And it didn't take you all long to, to write these out. It can be this simple for your students. All right, so I wanted to start with just a really quick exercise. We're going to dive into all of the empowerment journals that, uh, that we've created for you. But I also want you to know that if you don't see something that we have uh, on our website and available for you to use with your students, it's not challenging to create little tiny things that can just help your students retrain that inner voice. All right, a quick uh, just slide about me. Um, I'm husband, dad to the Hart family. I'm Vinny's human. Um, I've been an educator and a coach for 24 years. I'm a former New York City public school teacher, and I'm currently a faculty member here at SUNY Cortland, but I'm also the author of the Believe in You Empowerment Program. If you want to connect with me on social media, my Instagram is there. My Twitter handle is there. Uh, so feel free um, to, to connect at any given time. And I would love to hear from you um, about what you're doing with your students to help them with their mental health, especially around the idea of empowerment and journaling. All right, so on to the research. What I wanna be able to do is show you today a quick review of the power of journaling and all the research or a, a snapshot of the research, I should say, on journaling. The second, I wanna look at the data from the Believe in You pilot program. So we have evidence uh, that showcases that the Believe in You empowerment program works with students. And I'll, I'll be able to showcase that 
uh, very quickly for you to look at. Then we're going to explore the Believe in You Empowerment Journals, and I'll take you on a little bit of a tour of the resources that we currently have. You'll notice I'm wearing an open shirt. Um, I'm a member of the Open National Training Team. Um, I also uh, work very closely with the team that develops all the content for Open, and I started developing Open about nine years ago. If you know anything about the OpenPhysEd.org platform, you know that we started small and now we're massive. Those over 5,000 pages that you can download from OpenPhysEd.org. Believeinyou.com is going through that same evolution. We're starting with what you're going to see today, and we're going to continue to build it so that hopefully nine years from now, you're going to be able to see a massive library that you're going to be able to work through. So um, that's today's agenda. Emotional well-being and self-reflection is one of the most powerful things that you can do using journaling. So journaling provides a safe and private space for students to explore their thoughts, emotions, experiences. So this is important for teachers to think through. If we want to provide a safe and private space for students, we're not going to be grading journals. We're not going to be checking um, and reading every journal page. So this is a little bit of a relief for some people who uh, want to do journaling, but are like, I'm not sure how I can manage all of that, right? You don't have to grade journals. You shouldn't grade journals. They need to be safe and private. If students want to share from their journal, which I recommend that you do through discussion, um, if they want to share, they can. Um, but they, they need to understand that it's private, as private as they want it to be, and it's a safe space for them to explore their thoughts, emotions, and experiences. So it encourages self-reflection, self-awareness, and emotional processing. Uh, the, the original empowerment journals that are 40 weeks that I'll show you at the beginning of our tour, those were specifically written to help kids process their emotions. We unpack emotions, we define emotions, but we do it using prompts that keep their mental talk, that self-talk very, very positive. All right, so it, it's specifically written to get this done for you. So research um, in 2002 found that among adolescents, expressive writing such as journaling led to significant improvements in emotional well-being, reduced stress levels, and an increase in self-regulation. So a little bit of a background story and why this study is important to me. Um, when the pandemic hit, we wanted to create a tool that teachers could use that would help students in that moment. We knew that there was a lot of, um, actually just everybody was in this um, distance learning format. And we wanted to say, okay, how can we get uh, a resource out to as many students as possible? And so I started looking, what's gonna be most effective that we can provide digitally? Journals rose to the top quickly because of this specific reason, right? We wanted to help kids with their emotional well being. We knew they were under a lot of stress and we knew they were having problems regulating their emotions. And so this specific study that I ran across as I was um, looking at what we were gonna develop really started to formulate all of my thoughts around journaling. So academic performance and cognitive development. This is always on everyone's minds. We wanna make sure we're making good use of our instructional time, but journaling has been linked to improve academic performance. Um, for both middle and high school students. So this particular study from 1986 found that students who engage in expressive writing exercises demonstrated enhanced critical thinking skills, increased problem solving abilities. So I'm gonna address the fact that these studies are not new studies in just a minute, right? But one of the challenges as I'm going through a lot of the work with journaling in schools is that early on we found that these things were effective but like a lot of other things, they were fashionable for, for, for a time and then they fell out of fashion. All right, so we wanna make sure that we understand um, that 1986 is not two, 2023, holy cow, it's 2023 already, right? So um, how do we transfer the knowledge that we learned back then to the modern day? Um, and then of course, academic achievement. I forgot to hit the final button on that one. Not that that's not important, but for me personally, I know that if we help kids build these connections and help them process all of these things, academic achievement is going to come along with them. All right, and then finally, mental health and stress reduction. Um, so a study in 2012 found that regular journaling was associated with decreased symptoms of anxiety, specifically for high school students, and decreased symptoms of depression among high school students. 
So what's important here is that anxiety is worry about the future, right? It's um, it's spiraled thoughts that can't uh, disconnect with the worrying about tomorrow or next week or what's going to happen when we walk into school on on Friday um, because of whatever happened, right? That's what anxiety is. Depression is the ruminating thoughts about something that happened in the past, right? And so as we explore journaling and we start to think about how can we help kids process both what they're worried about and also those memories that they can't get out of their mind in, in a negative way. Um, journaling is this, this space and time where they can be safe and do the, those things. All right, if we, if we can help students write about stressful events, like living through a pandemic and being separated from their classmates, um, we know that from that point, they can process and make meaning out of the experiences, right? Many of us have done this just through our thinking, um, but as we start to look at uh, what it was like when we were locked down, what it was like when our kids were out of school, we really have started to process and make meaning out of a lot of this. And for, for me personally, I've tried to change some of my behaviors knowing that, hey, you know what? I do need to slow down. I do need to make sure that I'm carving out this time so that I'm present for um, my son and my daughter and they know that I'm present for them. And in lockdown, that I don't want to say it was easy, but it was easier because we were forced to be in the same room or the same set of rooms with those people for an extended period of time. Journaling can really help us process and, and extrapolate that meeting. It can reduce emotional distress. So whether it's anxiety or depression, there's emotional distress that comes along with it. And as students or anyone really are processing those things out, it reduces the level of emotional distress and promotes overall psychological well-being, which just makes sense. So as all of those things are being kind of dealt with, we know that we can now breathe, we can be more mindful, we can be more in the moment, and our psychological well-being improves. All right, if you are uh, a person who wants to go look all of these up, I wanted to make sure that I have the citations for you. So feel free to take a screenshot of those if you'd like. Um, and also, uh, as I said in the chat, we are gonna be sending out the recording of this um, in, a, in just a few days. And so you'll have access to it then as well. All right, what I wanna do now is dig into our pilot study data. Um, and so the details around this um, are, are, are really, for me, uh, just fuel for the fire to keep us building on this foundation that we already have. So this was published in January of 2023, which I love. We added to the research, we added to the body of evidence that's out there that showcases that journaling as a part of an empowerment program can really help students in many ways. So it involved four university researchers, 186 middle and high school students across three districts, five schools in total, all in Title I schools. Here's the other thing that I wanna make sure you understand. This was done in the heat of, of the pandemic. It was that time in 2021 where some schools were starting to come out of lockdown, but then we'd be constantly going back into lockdown and then we're out of lockdown. And there was all of this uncertainty swirling around. We actually distributed journals um, to more than 500 students. But as you can imagine, especially in Title I schools who are going in and out of in-person or uh, virtual schooling, it was kind of challenging to get the data sets back. So we were really excited that we were able to get 186 um, different data sets back in order to us in order for us to have a validated um, study. So those are the details that surround uh, the actual study that we did. The implementation looked like this. Uh, teachers received virtual professional development. So much like this webinar, I did a webinar for all of the teachers that were involved with the study. We walked through the Believe in You empowerment program, including the Believe in You video series. So if you haven't gone to believeinyou.com and checked out the video series uh, featuring Kevin Atlas, you definitely need, need to do that. Um, but what those teachers did is they showed one video per week. Um, and that was it. Those videos take about 10 minutes. Um, and they're, they're empowering videos where Kevin Atlas has a guest on that really has um, an inspirational story about how they can um, overcome challenges or how they um, overcame some obstacle in order to be successful in life. Um, so the, the program involved one of those videos per week, 
And then the students used our 40 week empowerment journals. Now, they didn't all do these every single day. There were some that did them every day, but the requirement was they had to do them a minimum of three days per week. All right, and again, it was a little bit easier in lockdown to make sure that they were doing them in class three days a week. But what we found in just the anecdotal data that came back was as teachers exposed their students to these journals, even if it was the, just the three days, the students tended to go to those journals on even their days off. So that was, um, that was the results. Just, over just 10 weeks, students in the implementation group showed significant gains in SEL knowledge. So, you know, the five core competencies of social emotional learning, we tested on that and we wanted to know if students really understand or, or could understand what um, all of those components were. And we saw significant gains in their knowledge there. But more importantly for me, the students in the implementation group showed significant improvement in emotional regulation, self-management, and self-efficacy. This is exactly what we were hoping we'd be able to help students with in this journey that we were helping them go along. We wanted them to be able to regulate their emotions in the heat of the pandemic, manage those emotions, and then feel confident that the actions that they were taking today were going to improve their lives tomorrow. And we're going to, we're going to dive into those um, definitions in just a minute. Um, but to me, this was, uh, I, I can't even explain um, really the validation in the work that we were doing. Um, and it just put fuel in the tank to really kind of explode this, this journaling journey that we can help both teachers and students go on in schools. And again, thanks to Varsity Brands, completely free for everybody. So it's also important to note, we did have a, a control group, but we wanted to make sure that the control group also received the resources, but on a delay. Um, so we we started the, started the study, and then once we were deep enough into the study where we could get um, comparison data, um, we did the professional development and provided all the journals um, to the control group as well. And what was really cool about this was just after five weeks, the delayed intervention group also exhibited significant, <clears throat> excuse me, changes in student self-efficacy. So just in five weeks, right? So again, these are all programmed to really reprogram those thoughts that students walk around with, the voice in their head that can either be a cheerleader or something much worse, right? We want to retrain it to be a cheerleader, a friend, a confidant that they're walking around with. Um, and, and the evidence shows that we were able to do that in a short period of time. All right. If you want to read the entire study, you can go there. Um, there's a QR code that you can just grab the link on your, on your phone if you'd like, um, or you can use that link as well um, to be able to go in and read the entire study. Um, I read the entire thing, uh, but honestly, when I go back to it, it's the discussion and the results that make all the difference. So um, if you wanted a little bit of a shortcut into all of that. So there is that QR code. I'm going to jump ahead. So what are our outcomes? Our outcomes are this, empowerment, the process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's life and claiming one's rights. That's the end result that we want our students to, to walk away from high school with, right? When they graduate at grade 12, we want them to feel confident that they're going out and claiming their, their rights so that they can be in control of their life and that life's not just controlling them. That's what empowerment is. Self-efficacy is the confidence in the capacity to execute behaviors necessary, necessary to produce these results. So this is the significant increase we help students with. They feel confident that they can actually do the things necessary to become whatever they want, to share their greatness with the world. All of that builds into what we call the Varsity Brands Empowerment Rights. So there are really no... Uh, standards and outcomes that are specific to the work that we were doing. So what we did is we built it. We built these outcomes to really be the driving force behind what we were trying to design. We believe students have the right to live optimistically, which is all around self awareness. We believe they have the right to act on positive motivation, which is self management. We believe they they have the right to live with respect for themselves and others, which is social awareness. 
communicate with a unique voice, which is how we build relationships with ourselves and with others. Um, but ultimately, we want them to make choices about how to share their greatness with the world. And that's responsible decision making. So these five empowerment rights are the foundational components to everything that we're building with the empowerment program, uh, with our journals, with our leadership program, um, and everything that we're doing on believeinyou.com. So that's the foundation of where we're going. All right, we're gonna jump into the resources. You can take a screenshot of this just so that you have the link, um, but we're gonna go to varsitybrands.com slash B-I-Y digital journals, and that's gonna take us into all of the journals uh, that we're gonna walk through. So I'll give you 30 seconds to go ahead and um, take a screenshot of that or jot down the actual link, and then we'll jump in. All right. Somebody share with me in the chat if you can see my web browser now. Give me a thumbs up in the chat room if you can see my web browser. All right, thumbs up, thank you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into the resources that you can download again, uh, completely for free. So when you, end up on this landing page. Um, there's the Bulletin newsletter link, which I told you you don't have to worry about. You guys are all signed up. There's the Believe in You Empowerment Program study, which you can click on and you can go ahead and read. Um, as we go through, I'm gonna share these links with you. We have a complete student leadership program. That's an entirely different webinar. Um, if you're interested in student leadership, you can drop me a note and just say, hey, when are you gonna do a, a, a webinar on leadership? And I, we'll make sure that we get you those resources um, as the webinar is, is developed. The Believe in You video series we just talked about with Kevin. You can dive into the video series here. The collective resources. So all of those mental health awareness um, resources that we were talking about. There's going to be an educator empowerment summit that's happening in July. If you're a part of the, uh, the collective and you go to that website and just check on what's going on regularly, you'll get all the information about that and then the bulletin newsletter button. So all of these things are here. I would ask you, please share this information with as many of your colleagues as possible. Um, again, everyone says that it's important to prioritize mental health, but oftentimes it gets lost in the shuffle of the busyness of the school day, the school year, and the metrics that we're actually measured on. So please share all of this information as best you can. What I'm gonna do is scroll down. The very first icons that you see, those are the 40-week journals. So these, I would suggest you look at over the summer, um, implement them when you get back in August or September. These are designed to last the entire school year. As you um, hover over these, you'll see that they're active links. If I click on this one, it's going to open up the journal in a separate uh, a separate window. I can download it. This is actually a PDF that you can go through. However, I want to make sure you know, if you click on this little plus sign, it expands with a whole bunch of different information that's going to help you with implementation. So, for example, um, if you want the PDF, that's great. But if you want a Google formatted journal, so students can have these in their Chromebooks and you can put them in Google Classroom and students can type right into them on their Chromebooks, you click on this link and it will make a copy for you right in your Google Classroom that you can then go and share with your students uh, digitally. Um, English and Spanish. So we offer both. Uh, now, what I want to let you know, if you have students who speak other languages, um, you have, we're, we're, we're giving you all of the permissions to take our journals and have your school-based team um, do those translations. So if, if you want to translate these in other languages, some schools have done these, that's why we know, um, and we've given permission to do that. Um, absolutely feel free to, to do those translations. Empowerment program curriculum documents. What I'm going to do is click on our block plan first. I'm going to click on this PDF and let me scroll in a little bit. So what you're going to see is a week by week outline of what you'll be doing with each week of the journal. So week one is all about living optimistically. That's the empowerment right outcome that we're working towards. The emotional vocabulary that we're going to unpack is trust. 
Trust is the foundation of everything that we need to help students with, with relationship building, with self-efficacy, um, with team building. It's all about trust. And then the SEL focus is specifically self-awareness. So you'll see that this little block plan gives you uh, a glimpse ahead on what you're going to do. So what I want to point out is this. In the first five weeks, we unpack five different emotional vocabulary concepts. So trust, enthusiasm, encouragement, fear, and motivation. At week six, we then loop back to trust. So we don't want to cover these important concepts like in a vacuum and never return to them because we know what's going to happen is in that week, we're going to unpack a lot of challenging stuff for kids to be able to think through, right? So as we come back in week six, now kids have had um, four weeks in between to process the information that they've journaled in the first place. So now they'll have a little bit different perspective as they come back to it. And we also put a little bit different twist on the prompts that we give them uh, for each day. So you'll see that when I show you the journals here in just a minute. But that cycle continues through all the 10 weeks. So week 11, we unpack joy, then anxiety, support interest, acceptance, and then we loop back and we cover those five elements again. And then the same thing for weeks 21 through 30, we go through and we work on these. And then for weeks 31 through 35, we unpack these five and then we loop back to them and we end with empowerment. We want students to really reflect on what empowerment means to them, what it means in their lives, and then how they can jump off into the summer or maybe into their college career feeling, uh, feeling empowered and feeling like they have the tools to be able to do this work. So that's the block plan. Program leader guide, I'm gonna click on this. I'm not gonna go through all of these different components, um, but this is just a very short guide that talks you through some of the things that I just talked you through, the program structure, um, how it's built, where, where we align to the Castle Core competencies um, as you go through uh, what those rights are, how this looks as we build a scope and sequence from K all the way to high school, um, and what are our outcomes that we're working towards in that respect. Um, all of the different program components and the things that you can utilize um, are right there and kind of defined. And then what our empowerment journals are for, and then what are some implementation tips. So uh, a couple, I'm going to hang out here for just a minute. A couple of implementation tips that we've learned through the last couple of years of these things being implemented. The first one that I'm going to share with you, a lot of folks have come and said, hey, we want to do these empowerment journals because we just don't have enough uh, we don't have enough adults in the building for kids to be able to talk to about um, their mental health or, or their emotional um, you know, issues that are going on. I'm going to tell you, these journals are not going to decrease the amount of conversations that kids want to have. They're not going to. They're, it's going to normalize those conversations. It's going to help them build the vocabulary so they can have more meaningful conversations, and it will actually increase the amount of conversations that you're having with your students um, when it comes to their mental health. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. And it's something that I, I talk about in all of the professional developments that we do. Um, if we're truly prioritizing mental health, that should be our outcome. And I know that it's not necessarily convenient in a school structure, but when we're putting students first in the equation, it truly is the outcome we're after. We want them to have more richer, um, deep conversations about their mental health with adults, with their peers, and with their families, right? So I just want to make sure that we're very clear about that. Um, and, and, and really, you're ready to listen with your eyes, your ears, and your heart because um, we want to see our students' behaviors matching the words that they're using. If you have that gut feeling about a student, maybe they are or aren't responding in a certain way, make sure you have resources at hand so that you can utilize those resources um, based on your professional gut feeling, right? That gut feeling, we have those things for a reason. Um, so as an educator, make sure you're, you're listening to those. 
All right, be patient with yourself. Here's what I always recommend to all educators. Do the journals with students, maybe a day ahead of the students. Um, in the United States, adults spent $1.5 billion, that's billion with a B, on life coaching. Adults did this. Why? Because we need to remediate all of these skills that we're trying to help students unpack. So be patient with yourself. There, it, this is a journey that we're all on. Social emotional learning is not just for kids. It's for every human being. So make sure that you're doing the work yourself so that when you're in the discussion groups with your kids and you're talking about the journals, you're ready to have those rich, detailed discussions. All right. So dig into this. Dig into this teacher's guide. It's there for you to be able to help you um, really unpack the program so that uh, you, can, you can be the best for your students. Um, the next thing, uh, PA announcements. If you want PA announcements uh, that you can utilize uh, per week that are matched up to the theme that we've listed on that block plan, they're right here. So week one, maybe you start on Monday uh, or maybe you do this on Friday before when they come back. Um, and you can obviously modify this to make them fit your, your feeling. Week one is all about trust. So the daily announcement is all about trust. So there's one of these announcements for each week of the program. All right, I'm going to click off of these. I want to make sure I get to all of the tools. Academic language tools. Um, this is a glossary that you can uh, provide to the students, unpack, um, and just utilize however you want with all of the emotional language um, that we felt like you really needed to have access to in order to be able to have these, these deep conversations around the journals. So as I scroll through, you'll see that was a list, but then we also break down each word. We provide part of speech, the definition, and then a little contextual sentence so that you can create these as like a, a bulletin board or however you wanna have these up in your students. You can even use these, um, you know, like in locker rooms or hallways, uh, wherever students are congregating, um, just as like a create this, this emotionally print rich environment where students are, are hanging out reading, you never know when something's going to sink in uh, for a student. So all of these academic language cards are available for you. Uh, there's dozens of them. So I'm not going to go through each one of them, but they line up with all of the different work that you need to do here. All right. If you want to share um, these journals, uh, you can copy and you can paste this into anything you want. We want you to share it with everybody. The one thing that we we want with this particular link, it helps us track click-throughs. So uh, for example, we know that across the world at this uh, point in time, there's over 40,000 teachers who have clicked on these journals. Um, and so we start to multiply that by maybe they're, they're impacting 10 students a year, 50 students a year, 100 students a year, 500 students a year. You can see how the impact snowballs. So at this point, we've had millions of students utilize these journals in their classrooms. Um, some implementation suggestions and just things that we've heard from people over the years. Um, we have uh, folks that are doing this in, in their homerooms. So to get started of the day, or maybe they have homeroom at the end of the day, I know homeroom's kind of shifting. Um, they, they start with you know five to 10 minutes of journaling. Um, as we click into the journals, you'll see it doesn't take very long. It's not designed to be a complete lesson. It's designed to be five to 10 minutes of time. So um, a lot of folks are doing this in homeroom. Uh, folks are doing this in advisory. Um, it's, it's an opportunity for them to really um, dig into some sort of social emotional concept in their advisory that helps kids unpack real life situations um, and, and things that are relevant to them instead of, you know, trying to unpack this in a way where a lot of high school students are going to think it's, it's too elementary for them. It's not relevant to their lives. Um, we've heard specifically that our empowerment journals, um, students walk away feeling like this was designed for them and their age group. All right, let's dig in really quickly. I'm going to click on to the actual journal so we can take a look at what this looks like. Um, as we scroll through, the first thing we want to do is we want to showcase to students what empowerment is. As the teacher, the facilitator of the program, we would suggest 
that you unpack these first few pages with your students. So you talk about what empowerment is. You talk about these empowerment rights. Um, and they, they can really start to have discussions around them and share their own thoughts and opinions. So as we go through, um, we'll take a page to really unpack what's coming up in the five weeks that's ahead. So this first one is really all about what an empowerment journal is and how it can help um, students. So we want to make sure they understand this work is not necessarily going to be easy, right? It's simple, but it's not easy, right? So nothing in life that's great is ever really easy, right? And a lot of times it takes courage. So we unpack that for the students. The next thing we know is that physical activity and nutrition can definitely or definitely does have an impact on our overall mental health. So we want to encourage kids to be physically active and we want them to eat more fruits and vegetables and to decrease the amount of sugary drinks, especially those sugary drinks that have caffeine. All right. So this is just a simple tracker. Um, kids can do this on their own. You can check it if you want to. Um, if nothing else, it's a reminder for everyone who looks at this page that it's an important part of their overall mental and physical health. So these wellness logs are right in there. We know we're gonna dive into optimism and trust in the first five weeks, so we unpack that. Uh, we've got our boy Kevin Atlas down here telling us that if we learn to believe in ourselves, the world will fall in line. And he is uh, definitely 100% a living example of that. Um, so a quick look at the first concept. Trust is the first concept here. Um, we use these graphic organizers to help kids unpack uh, all of this so they can really start to look at why they feel trust, when they feel trust, what does it look like, and why is it helpful. We trust a bridge every time we drive over it. It's helpful because if we didn't, we'd be stuck in the same place. We would never go anywhere because there's always a bridge we have to go over. Right. And so having the kids unpack these. Um, and again, this is Monday, just this graphic organizer. So it's not a it's not a, a book that they're writing. It doesn't even have to be complete sentences. It can be bulleted lists. Tuesday, who's the most trustworthy person, you know, and what makes that person trustworthy? We deliberately keep these spaces small because they can only fit three or four sentences if they write small. Right. We want this to be quick hitting, short, not not something that they feel like is a chore or that's going to take a long time. Um, optimism is trusting a positive future. What are you optimistic about? So you can see how we're taking this uh, growth mindset and this positive self-talk and embedding it into the work that students are going to be doing um, as they go through. So that's. Uh, the first three days of the week, then they jump into Thursday. We have more graphic organizers to help them really see um, the concept that we're trying to get through there. We always have Gratitude Fridays where they can just write in some things that they're grateful for to build in a little bit of um, uh, just patterns for them to, to dive into. And then Saturday and Sunday are weekly reflections um, that just help them reflect on that week. Once we go through that, you'll see we do the same exact thing with the next emotional concept. So enthusiasm, uh, we have the same graphic organizer to build routine. Um, then we dive into Tuesday. Who is the most enthusiastic person you know? What makes that person enthusiastic, right? So it's this, we, we live on repetitive self-talk. How can we start to change and reprogram that repetitive nature of our self-talk? Journaling is the perfect place to do that, right? So I'm going to skip ahead real quick, go kind of slowly through these. But you'll see um, those familiar graphic organizers. And then we're going to get to the end. And then we jump into week six through 10. So here's um, these checklists. Once again, we have that. And then we dive into great goals and purposeful practice. So this journal also is a goal setting exercise. They dive into short term and long term goal setting. Um, and we want to make sure they understand what that process is. We use the great goal process. Um, and so we unpack what a great goal is. And then we give them a worksheet so that they can set these great goals. How you utilize these is up to you. I've had teachers say, you know what, I just don't, don't have the time or space to do goal setting with my kids, so we skip ahead to the journals. That's totally fine. Um, we have a doodle page because that was an extra page as we were printing them. 
And then we dive back into trust and you'll see a completely different way we organize the information around trust for week six through 10. And we do that very purposefully. We want them to actually visually see something different with the same concept, right? So again, as they dive in, we want them to also look at trust is confidence that someone or something will behave in a way that's beneficial. Write about a person that you have confidence in because of their consistent behaviors. Right. And we dive back into this trustworthy things. Um, sometimes in life, we have to have confidence in our own behaviors. In a time of challenge, what specific positive behaviors do you know you'll demonstrate? Sometimes when we look at our own behaviors, we have to ask ourselves, do we really trust ourselves in the situation? And oftentimes we don't. Right. And so how do we help kids unpack that? So anyway, um, we go through. We want to make sure kids can unpack, process all of this information, all right? So um, those are the 40-week journals. Dive in, take a look. This is high school. This is middle school. This is designed for grades three through five. As we dive into grades three through five, you'll see, um, obviously, it's branded a little bit different, but we also have clue ideas. So we know that for those young students, um, they may be having trouble. I'm just... Uh, jumping ahead, they may have trouble thinking of some ideas. So we give them clues next to each day so that they can actually go in um, and do a little bit of writing that way. Um, we also change up this graphic organizer. Um, and so we don't have four concepts, but we just break it down to three to simplify it a little bit. So um, age appropriate writing prompts. Uh, some folks can't do these with third graders. Some schools can. Some Some, some people have to use these um, with their fifth graders, that's fine. So again, it's free. You didn't pay for it. Use it where it's useful. Um, and the parts and pieces that are not useful, that's okay. Another way that we've heard from folks that are using these, we have had people say they'll take screenshots of just that day and they'll put it up on their smart board um, or they'll put it up using their projector and then the kids will have a spiral notebook that they'll do. Or maybe they'll do this as an exit slip. And so they have to do these writings and they turn them in. Now you just have to let them know whether or not you're going to look at them because again, we want these private trusting spaces. Um, but as long as you let them know these things, then um, you're in good shape. With my students, what I've done is I've let them know, hey, this week we're going to unpack Tuesday. All right, so be prepared to talk through or to, to send me Tuesday's prompts. What I've found is a lot of times some of the other days they don't go into, but the days that I specifically go into, they may use that to give me information they want me to have, right? And, and I've been teaching here at SUNY Cortland for quite a while now. Before I started using these journals, I never had to refer students to counseling. Right? Because of these journals, I've now referred several students to counseling and they've always come back and thank me for it. Luckily, we have a really good counseling center here, right? So again, um, these, these are things that are not going to just be quick fixes. And it's, it's this program that's going to now be your mental health solution. It's just one part of it. And destigmatizing all of this is an important part. So those are the 40 week journals. Now, a lot of schools have gone through these. They said, Hey, we've already used your 40 week journals. What's next? So instead of building out more 40 day journals, what we did was we built five day journals because we wanted them to be either the next step in the evolution for folks who've already done the 40 day journals or an easy entry point. So if you're not ready to go full 40 weeks, we have five day journals. What I love about these five day journals is that I'm building them based on the leadership qualities of our senior executives at Varsity Brands. So you're gonna dig in to um, the concepts that Adam Blumenfeld, who's the CEO of Varsity Brands, um, credits for his ability to be successful over time. Um, for Bill Seeley, who's the president of Varsity Spirit, um, you know, grit is his journal. And he'll tell you how important grit was for him growing up and overcoming adversity. Um, and, and then we have enthusiasm, which is Terry Babilla. And if you've ever met Terry from BSN Sports, the president of BSN Sports, he's one of the most enthusiastic guys um, on the planet. And then Martha May, who's our chief people officer, um, who heads up our, our HR department, um, her interview around loyalty was so powerful and made me think about loyalty in a completely different way 
Um, and so, you know, what I want to be able to do is share some of the successful leadership DNA that we built around varsity brands and the companies of varsity brands and share that directly with schools. Um, so I'm going to just dive in. Uh, I'm going to dive into our loyalty journal um, because it's the latest one and I'm really liking it. So as you dive in, uh, it'll go in there. It'll give you a little bit of background upon loyalty. So this you can share and have this discussion with your students. Um, and then we jump right in to day one. And again, we want kids to read these positive thoughts all around what loyalty is, what it means. The first component of loyalty is being loyalty to your truth, right? Not loyal to, you know, uh, um, you know, some artist that you're a fan of or not loyal to a specific coach just because they're in a, a, a piece uh, or, or a, a position of, of authority. But the first thing you have to understand is you have to be loyal to your own truth. So we unpack that a little bit with some contextual um, uh, writing here. And then this piece here are the prompts, right? So list three topics, skills, or courses that you get excited about and that you're interested in learning it. So they just quickly jot down those three topics. Next, to each interest, write one or two words that express how or why these things are a part of your enthusiastic self and your authentic self. So they just write one or two words. After that, choose one of these interests, just one of the three that they've described, and then talk about how um, that helps you express your authentic self to the world. So again, we're just in these short bites helping kids unpack their authentic self and really talk about what their specific personal truth is. Once we get through with that, that's day one. Day two, be loyal to your mission. So based on your truth, what is your mission? What does it mean to be a servant leader? How can you use your excitement about a topic to serve your greater community, to serve the people that you care about? And we unpack that. All right, once we do that, we need to define and understand our motivation so that we can be loyal to our team, right? Because our motivation is going to rub off on our teammates, and that's going to affect the way that we behave as a cohesive unit. So once we understand that and we can be loyal to our team based on that motivation, we want them to understand that we need to be held accountable for making process, progress. How can we be loyal to team progress and not necessarily individual progress? It's great to score the most points, but if your team loses, it doesn't really matter, right? So this is all about being committed to thinking about team-based progress. And then from there, be loyal to your courage. And we talk about courage a lot because it's so important for kids to understand that in the face of fear and uncertainty, that's where we get to demonstrate courage. Without fear and uncertainty, there's no courage. So the most courageous people that we admire um, are, are really built on this. So I'm going to go back really quick. Again, click on this plus sign. You can download the PDF packet, or if you want this for your Google Classroom, you can copy it. Uh, the, you can copy the Google version as well. Phew. All right. I just flew through a ton of information all around the journals that we have. But what I want you to remember is you can utilize these in a million different ways. If you want to dig into enthusiasm with Terry Babilla uh, from BSN Sports, um, this is just a snapshot into his mind. If you want to take five days, that's great. If you want to do this every Monday for five weeks, that's great too. There's, no, there's, there's nothing that says it has to be done in one week, right? If you have to skip a week because of an assembly or whatever, it's okay. Just come back to it. The important thing is to build this environment and routine that's based on trust and consistency. All right. So you can tell, I hope I'm enthusiastic about this. Again, um, we are going to send you an email um, that will have the recording of this. Um, hopefully you grabbed all of the links, but if you forget them all, you can just go to believeinyou.com. Um, and you can click around and access all of these materials, plus a lot more. I've got three minutes left on my clock. Um, so if anybody has any questions that they would like to pop into the chat, um, I'm going to hang out for a few more minutes. But most importantly, thank you guys for being here and for prioritizing mental health for your students and also for yourself. Um, I'm always here if you need me.